Well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Chris Dinell with Remax West Coast and the Dinell Real Estate Group. And today I've been very lucky to have a special guest, uh, Michael Friedman, uh, with uh, Premier Mortgage uh, Advisement here in Richmond. He's been a mortgage broker for over 30 years. I don't know, Michael, you must have started when you were about 10 years old. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I lie. I, I, you know, <laughs> I say 15 so I can, you know, I can get under the under 50 mark. There, there you go. There you go. Well, thanks for, I know you reached out to me in, um, uh, early, or late last week and we were discussing, uh, you know, what's going to happen with the interest rate, um, or is it going to be held? Is it going to, is it going to go move up? Is it going to move down? You gave me some really great information that I thought I needed to share this with our clients. So tell me a little bit about kind of what has happened over the past 24 hours and what's going to be happening in the next six months to 12 months here with the interest rates. Okay, so um, it was widely expected that uh, the Bank of Canada was going to hold the, uh, the overnight rate at 5%, which they did. Uh, inflation is starting to ease. There is still some concern with inflation, that, and that's the prime driver of why rates have moved up. Um, however, I think the Bank of Canada is now getting the feeling that things are starting to subside with inflation. So we're anticipating that inflation, uh, uh, inflation is going to keep dropping and that the Bank of Canada is going to hold their overnight rate um, at 5%. Now, an interesting article I read this morning is we all assume that the Bank of Canada would not stop, would not start to drop uh, their rates until they saw uh, inflation really get closer to that 2% benchmark they like. But there's some opinion that they may start before that. Uh, and basically that's to ease as, uh, well, we don't want to go into a recession. And there's some debate by a lot of different economists. Are we in a recession? This going be a soft landing. But the Bank of Canada is trying to manage this into a soft landing. So. You know, we've been uh, we've been advising clients that we think rates are going to start to drop back with the Bank of Canada. And again, there's a difference between interest rates that a lot of people don't understand is that what the Bank of Canada does affects your variable mortgages. What happens in the Canadian bond market affects fixed mortgages. So they're two different they're two different uh, animals. But um, we've been advising clients that we think the Bank of Canada is going to start to drop rates in mid 2024. Uh, all the uh, uh, spreadsheets we run on it are based on that, but um, it could happen before that. It really depends on what's happening in the economy. Just to give us some context, I mean, you know, people hear about, you know, rates are, overnight rates of 5%, prime rate at the banks is at 7.2. So when you're taking a variable, it's usually prime minus something. But uh, you have to kind of reflect on where rates have been. And over the, in the past decade, Bank of Canada's average rate uh, was 1.25%. We're now at 5%. So, uh, and just before the pandemic, it was 1.75%. So, you know, that's a 300% increase. And, this, and it's very similar to what fixed mortgage rates did because during the pandemic, we got down to one and a half percent. And by the way, a five-year mortgage for the last 10 years, excluding the pandemic, has averaged around 4%. So, you know, we are now in the 6% range on five-year mortgages. Uh, and what a lot of people also don't understand is that we're in what's called an inverted yield curve, which means short-term mortgage rates are more expensive than long-term. And it's usually the other way. Mm. Technically, eight out of 10 times, I believe that's happened. We've entered some form of slowdown uh, or a recession. Um, I think what we're gonna see is, the, I think the fixed five-year fixed rates are gonna probably maintain close to where they're at. And you'll start to see the short-term start to drop. Um, and I probably would bet on that happening over the next six months. So this leads me to buyers out there. If you're a buyer sitting on the sidelines, I think I was a statistic I heard earlier and uh, just a few weeks ago, and it might even be you, Michael, that 25% of buyers are sitting on the sidelines waiting for prices to drop. 25% of buyers are waiting on the sidelines waiting for interest rates to drop. So we've got 50% of the, of the market share just waiting to see what happens here. But when things do shift and price and interest rates do come down, we will see the market get you know crazy again. I believe that's what I, I believe. Now you, you've been doing this a lot longer than I have. What are your um, I guess what are you visioning? What's going to be happening in the next six months here if interest rates do come down? Yeah, usually what happens is there's a bit of perception by the consumer that you know things are bad right now. Um, you know rates are high. Uh, and there's a lot of people on the sidelines. I'm having that in, in my practice also. Um, what I 
believe is going to happen, what I've seen happen in the past in different cycles is, I think this time what will happen is, once the consumer believes that the Bank of Canada is on hold, which it looks like they are, you're going to start seeing some people come off the fence. Interesting enough, I had like six appointments get booked, like within three hours after that rate announcement. Oh, and really? you can all see wow. it's about discussions about uh, different aspects of buying and refinancing. Um, I think the next step where more consumers will start to come off the fence is once they hear that uh, uh, some of those fixed rates are starting to drop, probably on the short end, you'll see another bunch come off the fence. And I think you'll see a, uh, a cascade back into the market once the Bank of Canada drops their rate probably by you know a quarter-ish uh, or whatever they're going to drop it in the next six to nine months. The problem with that is um, it's hard to tell people that this is a great market to buy in when rate, where rates are. And there's some things you can do to mitigate what high rates are so you can take advantage of rates coming down. But typically what I find in this market, it's a great market to buy in because there's not as much activity. Exactly. You know, yeah, could no you overbuy tech? What's that? Not much competition. There still is no. competition in some smaller markets. You know, like for example, in Richmond here, Steveston, so there's not a lot there's nothing under nine hundred fifty thousand dollars right now so something you know there's yeah. similar markets where if something a one bedroom is going to come up under 600 grand that's probably going to get scooped up pretty quickly in that market you may see over asking but majority of the market we're not seeing we're not seeing competition out there which is great for buyers yeah absolutely and um you know my my philosophy is and i bought i bought in a market like this myself my first home and uh, in my head, I was thinking, okay, I could be overpaying by 5%-ish. But the reality is, is that loss will come back as the market picks back up. And I got in, for my first home was, uh, uh, we got a really great uh, deal structured on it. So, and it was the right home and I still own that home. Yeah. So um, um, I would caution people to sit on the sidelines for too long, uh, because I think what's happening is, what's going to happen is, you are correct, it's going to be a rush to the door um, once, uh, and, and it's usually, it, it usually happens with, you know, the media you know, coming out and saying rates have dropped and, 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 oh, and, and real estate sales have picked up and then it's, and then it's a mad rush. Yeah. Uh, personally, I'd probably suggest, uh, you know, poking around and looking at, if you're, if you have a need to get in the market, this is a wonderful time to, uh, as a buyer for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. There's great, you know, there are deals to be had out there. Uh, you just need a good representative to help be out there looking for you and finding those deals. Uh, but there are definitely um, some deals to be had. Now, um, anything else you want to wrap up with before here, Michael, before we let you go? But I, I really yeah, appreciate absolutely. You um, if, if anybody's watching this and their mortgage is coming up for renewal, be very cautious. Uh, the bank's been pushing three-year terms. It's been very popular. Um, I have a different philosophy on what to do right now to take advantage of rates as they drop. So and if any of your audience, your clients would like to hear about that, they're more than welcome to contact me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that, Michael. And if, if uh, somebody did want to reach out to you, how can they do that? Well, they can call me at 604-657-1684, or they can go to my website, which is uh, michaelfriedmanamp.com. The other Michael Friedman's a guitarist here in Vancouver. He's very good, by the way. <laughs> and he managed to get the dot .com before I did, so I added the AMP. Uh, which at one time was the credit mortgage professional. So it's Michael uh, Friedman at uh, amp.com. Uh, and on there, there's actually, you can go ahead, I've got my calendar there. You can just book an appointment directly and have a chat with me. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Michael, for, for jumping on here with us today. And uh, yes, buyers or even people renewing, reach out to Michael or a specialist. You got to get on hold of this. Uh, it's funny, I always say reach out to a mortgage broker because you're able to, of course, uh, look at you know multiple different lenders where if you're just looking at your bank, the bank's only going to give you what they're going to yeah. give you. So uh, th great advice, Michael. Thank you so much and I hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Take care.